artificial intelligence is reshaping our experiences and in other cases it's replicating them today on future now talks my guest is an expert in ai alberto arake he is the head of ai and iot industrial solutions at atasala digital and he's been responsible for several key projects such as hasantik digital health smart cities industry 4.0 and Cloud Video AI. Welcome to Future Now Talks, Alberto. Thank you for having me, Alia. Can you tell us about the maturity level of AI technologies and machine learning technologies in the market? Yeah, well, this is a very interesting question because uh, it may have different answers depending on the applications, sector of activity, or, or region. But going back a little bit on the time, so I have to say that the AI technologies are not new. They are here for, for a long time, since the 1950s. So, but the problem at that time was the computing capabilities and the availability of large data sets to train those models. So, but in the last 30 years, they started to, well, the, the, the technology, the cloud computing and, all, uh, and, and, the, and the communication networks like 5G are starting to come. And, and they are, these technologies are leveraging on those capabilities to make a good progress. Maybe the, the, one of the uh, use cases that become, uh, became a mainstream was the anti-spam filter that uh, was developed in the, in the 90s, in the last century. So that uh, improved a lot the user experience of, uh, with the email, right? Mm. So from there, the deep learning technologies were progressing a lot and, and you will see today that there is a lot of progress, for example, in computer vision and speech recognition. And, um, and well, this is just the starting point, but more and more companies are uh, looking at AI because they see the benefits and also governments like uh, in the UAE. But this is only the uh, start of this journey. Can you tell us more on how AI and machine learning technologies are being utilized in the use cases you mentioned or other use cases? Yeah, well, uh, we are using in our daily lives a lot of uh, use cases. For example, when you are unblocking your smartphone with the face, you are using a deep neural network. Or when you are asking something to Siri or to Alexa or to Google, uh, you are using a speech recognition that is based on a deep neural network as well. Or when you are driving uh, your car and the car is detecting the road signals and mm -hmm. is giving to you warnings like a trespassing a line. So you are using again a, a machine learning technologies. A, in the smart buildings, we are applying a predictive maintenance to uh, anticipate when a component of the building is going to fail and, and we can send maintenance order to the facility manager to avoid any downtime in, in those components. So more and more, um, those use cases are being used in, the, in our lives and in, even in, in the different sectors of activity industry. If I was a company and I wanted to implement AI projects and to ensure that those AI projects are successful, what would you advise me? Okay, so I think that there are three main key things that the company has to do to implement an AI program. Tell me. The first one is uh, to run this program at the company level, avoiding any silo, okay? And also it has to be sponsored by the CXOs because at the end, an AI program is mm. gonna transform the company and the way that the company is interacting with the customers and with their providers. Uh, the second is about uh, data. So you know that, uh, well, the machine learning algorithms are very important, but if you don't have data to train those algorithms, you don't, you don't, don't have, have anything. anything. You don't have anything. Mm. So uh, any company that wants to be data-driven has to understand where are the sources of data that are in, the, in, in this company and also to have a policy around the data so that we rules on how to use this data. And the third one, that is also very important is to the ability to scale up. I mean, with this, it's a, um, a, we see that there are a lot of proof of concepts that are very successful in the market. But, but when it comes to go to production, we see that a lot of companies are failing. And this is because they are not 
having the right resources in the company and also they are not having the right technologies. So here a good receipt is to have a good team that is taking care of the AI program together with good partners, uh, good technology partners that can understand the requirements of the company. And from your experience, if we um, look at five years from now, how do you predict AI would change and affect our lives? Well, and this is a very challenging question because who knows? But uh, what I can tell you is that AI will be more and more in our lives and also it will be more and more in the processes of companies and government. I can anticipate that uh, in five years from now, uh, most of the decisions that the companies are taking and the government are taking will be supported by AI algorithms. Even more, with the progress that we have done in the last 15 to 10 years in deep learning with uh, computer vision, with uh, speech recognition, this will be main driver, driver to, to spread the use cases all across the, the industries. In five years from now, we will have fully autonomous cars in the streets. And this will change the way that, um, that the, well, at least you go to the office or, or you send your kids to the school because at the end, the car will be driving to you there and then the car will come back to your home, for example. And uh, in five years from now, you will be having a conversation with uh, in natural language with Alexa or with Siri or with Google or with any contact center that you, you require to, to call. And in five years from now, the factories will be AI and data and data driven. Uh, they will be able to connect what is happening in the market with the products, with the product design and with the production lines that they have. And, and even more, uh, the predictive maintenance that I was, I was putting as an example today of the smart building will be in the factories, uh, in all the machines, uh, preventing any downtime and making them more competitive in the market. And, and another sector of activity that uh, will be a revolution will be the health sector, because AI will be supporting um, uh, the main processes of uh, this sector, from diagnosis, to protocol development, to drug development, to patient care and monitoring. Uh, so, well, it's exciting what is going to happen in the next five years. And I can say that uh, AI will be supporting a lot of uh, our lives, will make our life easier, and will make uh, uh, the companies more competitive and the government to be more close to their, to their citizens. So if I ask you about the future, if there is something that you want to protect or keep and stop from changing, what would you choose? Well, if I have to choose one, uh, I will say that uh, the, the environment, the nature, the wildlife. So I think that this is something that we need to preserve for, for our gen uh, future generations because this is a legacy that uh, we have to preserve for them. And if it was the other way around, if there is something that might happen in the future and you can bring it today, what would you choose? Well, uh, I have it clear. So I will bring the AI technologies applied to the health because uh, having this, so I'm sure that we can prevent and even cure any disease of the human being. Thank you for joining me on Future Now Talks, Alberto. Thank you. At Future Now, we bring the latest technologies and solutions by collaborating with scale-ups, IoT developers, and our customers. And that's what the Future Now talks are all about, so stay tuned.